The Robinson McGuinness era of devolution began on Friday in London. And guess what? The First and Deputy First Ministers agreed that they would continue talking to each other in the days and weeks ahead. It's nice to know that the parties running the government here talk to each other, but for some reason the Ulster Unionists and the SCLP aren't impressed. So Reg MP and Mark Durkin are here to tell me why. Uh, Reg MP, uh, why are you so annoyed about this? Is it because it simply emphasises the point that your parties are marginal to what goes on, whether it's Stormont or in London? No, it's not for that reason at all. Uh, the fact is, I said in the House this week, what, that the problems concerning the devolution of policing, justice and other outstanding matters, the problems are here. The problems are in Stormont. The problems are not in London and the problems and are not in Peter Dublin. Robinson said he wants to involve the other parties. Has yeah. he invited you to talks this week to sort these things out? No. And indeed I made the point also on Thursday that since the executive began on the 8th of May last year, not, no meeting has taken place between the leaders of the parties that make up that executive. So uh, that's from the 8th of May to now. There hasn't been a single meeting involving the leaders of the parties re responsible for forming the government. And when you consider that my own party and the SDLPs together account for nearly two-thirds of the budget that Stormont spends, would you not think it would be sensible uh, to have a meeting of that nature from time to time to set a sort of general direction? Well, Mark Durkin, how long uh, are you uh, prepared to tolerate this uh, as, as a party of government uh, being effectively ignored then? Well, it's not a matter of being effectively ignored. The fact is we have one minister. That minister does her job very well in her own department and tries to participate as strongly as she can within uh, the wider executive. Of course, the executive adopts policies that we don't always agree with, uh, naturally, when we're there in such a small way. And we reflect our differences with those uh, policies. We reflected it in our differences in voting for amending the budget and trying to amend the programme for government. And the validity of our amendments is now very clear to everyone. As people see uh, service cuts starting to bite because of the budget squeeze, as people see uh, some of the reviews and the so-called uh, reforms starting to turn into service reduction. Uh, in a number of key areas as people see funding for children. We were told children were a priority in this budget. We've seen the children's fund disappear. We have seen children's services cut in a whole range of areas and even the Minister of Education is now saying that the problem is the budget doesn't allow her to even continue the extended well, schools programme. Do you think programme. that the talks in London achieved anything? Is there a timetable now, do you think, for resolving these outstanding matters? Have you been informed about anything? Uh, not uh, really, obviously, certainly not from either Sinn Féin or the DUP. Uh, the Prime Minister gives me his version of what is, uh, is going on, so we'll just have to wait and see. My hunch has always been that the DUP would move on the devolution of justice and policing this calendar year. I think Peter Robinson, and I've said it for a long time, was a good student of the process. I don't think he was going to make the mistake that David Trimble made of vetoing something too long. He was going to assert his authority by completion of the deal. I think Sinn Féin got a sense of that and wanted to be seen to be then pushing the dashboard okay. uh, to claim that they were actually delivering something that was going to happen anyway. Well, you say the Prime Minister gives you an indication. Have you been speaking to him? Everybody's been talking about this vote at Westminster this week for the 42 days detention and the fact that there are nine DUP votes up for grabs. There are potential three SDLP votes. What have you been saying to Gordon Brown? Well, we've been making our position very clear. We are opposed to 42-day uh, detention. We're also opposed to what this bill provides for in terms of uh, coroner's courts, uh, in terms of secret inquests. And, and, and has he tried to persuade you otherwise? Uh, yes, and obviously the government are trying to tell us that they have put in protections there that meet all the civil liberties arguments. We have looked closely at the government's amendments. We don't think that they actually add up to the, protect to the protections that they uh, claim. And what we're looking at in terms of the coroner's uh, position is essentially a digitally remastered version of the old 1922 Special Powers Act uh, as far as the suppression of inquests uh, is concerned and there's no way that our party with our history uh, celebrating 40 years of civil rights uh, can vote for anything like that or for 42 day uh, detention when protections don't work in terms of civil liberties and it what, creates what's your a sense terrible of, situation if, for Parliament. Uh, if Gordon Brown still needs your votes uh, and you say he has uh, the government has been sounding you out about where you're voting. Do you think they still need every vote they can get, therefore? I mean, have, have they considered doing a deal with the DUP, do you think? Uh, that's my sense, and, and certainly earlier on the government were not ruling out a deal with uh, the DUP. They were straight enough to, to tell me that, that, that they couldn't give me a guarantee that there wouldn't be a deal with the DUP, whether they will or not, uh, I don't know. But if the DUP do a deal, if Peter Robinson does a deal and says that he gave the vote 
uh, on the basis of money coming to the executive or consideration of the army bases, then that raises fundamental issues about the executive. Can the DUP do executive business uh, on that sort of basis? It raises fundamental questions for Martin McGuinness and Sinn Féin. Is he prepared to allow the first minister effectively to unilaterally deal in the executive's interest in okay. something that would be a matter of controversy and difference? Well, Reg MP, uh, if every vote counts for Gordon Brown, where does the Austrian Unionist vote? Where does Lady well, Sylvia well, Herman stand? Basically, <clears throat> she's been attempting to get clarification from the Home Secretary for some weeks now without success. Uh, she's had further discussions with Paul Goggins, and I know that uh, Number 10 are wanting to know wh where, what her position is, and she's still uh, not satisfied. Now, whether in between now and the vote there's any attempt to clarify positions for her remains to be seen. But we've got to remember this is a game of two halves. Even if it passes the common stage, it's still got to go to the Lords. And there, I think that it's, it's awaiting a, a very different fate. Uh, whatever happens in the Commons this week, and I think therefore this particular piece of legislation, I think is, is, is doomed to have great difficulties getting through the Parliament. But what we're seeing there at Westminster, mm. surely that's the business of real government. We're seeing a government that's trying to get a controversial policy through, and we're seeing concerted and real opposition from the other benches. Mm. It's exactly the sort of thing we're not seeing at mm. Stormont. Is it not time for you to con seriously consider moving into opposition? Well, first of all, it's not a new idea. Um, the current structures uh, don't provide for a formal opposition. Well, do and we I, need to? Well, in practice, it would leave you completely isolated outside the system. Now, I think most people, uh, and I went to the polls last year on the basis that we were going to participate in the government, and at least the Ulster Unions Party told the people the truth before they voted and not waited to slither into government afterwards the way the DUP did. So we told the people we were going in, I think we have an honour, to honour that commitment, we have to make every reasonable effort uh, to try and deliver for people. Is that a uh, guarantee that you'll be in the executive uh, come hell or high water until the next election? No, it's not a guarantee of that at all and it cannot be a guarantee of that because if events uh, and policies are introduced that are such that we couldn't live with them, then no political party can give that sort of an undertaking. But neither do I think people expect at the first sign of difficulty, their politicians to walk away and not try and make the effort. We are trying to make the effort. We've difficult portfolios to handle. We will try and deliver for people. But at the end of the day, it depends whether the new First Minister and the Deputy First Minister want to run the executive as it was designed to be run. And unfortunately, the farce on Thursday, where the Assembly gathered merely to witness a signing of a, 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 a notification of a signing of a piece of paper where we had no right to vote the First and Deputy First Minister, which was taken away from us by Peter Hain. Um, I think that that is the sort of area where we need to correct things because the wrong impression has been given.